Hi everybody, this is Ms. Clemmy and welcome to the first of two videos on the excretory system. So as you can see from the picture, the excretory system is producing waste. It's producing liquid waste, uh, but in doing so, it's one of the most critical systems in your body for maintaining homeostasis. Because essentially what it's doing when it removes waste is it's keeping um, balance in your blood and your body, not only the amount of water, but the amount of stuff that's dissolved in it. And in addition, it regulates the buildup of nitrogenous waste such as ammonia that your cells produce when they're um, breaking down proteins. And so in doing these two what seem like seemingly small things actually have a really big role in like our blood pressure and um, just the osmolarity of our blood and our pH. So our kidneys and our excretory system play a pretty big role in that. So let me give you a little bit of background on or let's say the theory on why we need an excretory system. So let's um, scale it down to if humans were one cell. And that'd be pretty easy because as, as a one-celled critter you'd still produce CO2 but we've now evolved lungs to get rid of that whereas if you're one cell you could just diffuse CO2 through your cell membrane. The same with getting food for digestion you just it, it'd be get, gotten through diffusion. Um, this same goes for the nitrogenous waste that your cells produce, called urea, rely on diffusion. However, we know that humans are not one-celled. We know we're multicellular and diffusion doesn't work because not all our cells have contact with the outside environment. So let's take a look at this very simplified schematic of all the different types of waste um, in our bodies. And the simplest one to begin with is digestion. We've talked about this before where we have food travel down, nutrients in the small intestine get absorbed into the blood, um, and what's left is something called extracellular waste. This is waste not produced by your cells, just waste that from the food that can't be digested. On the other hand, your cells produce two types of waste, so we call it intracellular waste. It comes from breaking down the products of metabolism. So one of those is CO2 and we easily get rid of that and expel it via our alveoli in our lungs. And the other type of waste produced from our body cells um, is a, a, a nitrogenous waste. And that gets um, travels in your blood and then it goes into your excretory system where it gets filtered from your blood and eventually it leaves the body via urine. So let's take a closer look at that process. How do we make that intracellular waste? So first of all, where does that nitrogenous waste come from? Well, it comes from using and breaking down proteins. And our cells are doing this all the time. And proteins are made of two things. They're made of, um, um, well, they're made of amino acids. And let me rephrase that. Amino acids are made of two things. They're made of a carboxylic acid, which is this in green. And that can really be taken care of by rearranging the bond to form CO2 and water so our lungs can easily um, exhale that. The other half of the amino acid is the amine or the nitrogen based component. And over here that's ammonia in the yellow um, circle. And ammonia is really, really toxic. So what our bodies do, what our cells do, is immediately convert that ammonia into a little less non-toxic um, substance called urea. And that's what gets um, transferred into our blood and eventually filtered out of our body by our excretory system and ends up as one of the main components in urine. But the question is, how do we actually get the urea filtered out of our blood. So let's focus on that. And to do that, we I want to start on a large scale by looking at all the four major organs of the excretory system. At the very top, we have the kidneys, and they probably play the, the most important role because they're the ones that are producing the waste. Um, not only do they do that, but they're by doing so, they're cleaning our blood, and they're maintaining that fine balance of water electrolytes like sodium and potassium and pH. So once urine is produced, 
Um, then it just travels down a tube called the ureter and into the bladder for storage and then out the urethra. If we zoom in on just the bladder and the urethra, the bladder, um, it's an involuntary muscle and it can hold uh, about a half a pint of, uh, of, of liquid waste. But it's pretty muscular so we can, we can get it to stretch if need be. And the urethra, um, in males, it carries urine and semen for reproduction. Females, it only carries urine and it's much shorter. And the opening that um, urine is excreted through from the urethra is called the urinary meatus. Remember, me a meatus is just a round circular opening. Now, we can actually do the, the work of the urethra artificially through something called catheterization, where there is a tube that's stuck through the ureter. I know it sounds very painful, but um, for those patients that require it, it's, it's um, a breath of fresh air. It's, it's a good thing for them. And it goes all the way into the bladder um, where it stays, and it can pump out the urine as necessary. Now, because the kidney plays such a critical role, I do want to go back here and take a little bit more time to look at the gross anatomy of the kidney. Because there's a lot of different players in the kidney because it's, hey, it's pumping 20% of your blood through these things every minute. So let's start at the blood. How do we actually get blood into our kidneys? Well, that's simple. That's the renal artery. Blood comes from the aorta, and then it branches off into the renal artery, and from there it branches many different directions. And then heads up to these inner portions of the kidney, it gets filtered, and then that blood leaves via the renal vein and does its thing in the circulatory system as, it, as it's now cleaned. Now the waste that got filtered from the blood, that's going to pool in this kind of tan area, and we call that the renal pelvis. And once that renal pelvis overflows with all the urine that's produced, it eventually starts to just kind of drain down into the ureter, and gravity brings it down to the bladder. Now, when we go back to all the, the, the heart of the kidney up here, in this red section, it's divided into two major areas. The outer cortex, you can kind of see along here, and then the inner portion is the medulla. And the medulla is made of these right here. These are called the renal pyramids. Okay, I could highlight each one of them here. And you'll see what role they play very shortly. So we have the renal cortex on the outside, the medulla on the inside, and the little triangles in the medulla are the pyramids. And a lot of the filtering takes place in the cortex, medulla, and the pyramids. And then that waste is initially drained from each pyramid into what's called a calyx. And that calyx merges with other calyces, kind of all blends together into the renal pelvis. Now let's zoom in on one of those renal pyramids. And in those renal pyramids, here's one that we've kind of zoomed in on, is something called the nephron. And the nephron is where it's at. This is the structure. And there are millions of them packed in the kidney. This is the filtering unit of the kidney, is the nephron. And the nephron, let's see here. Um, the nephron is where blood gets taken in, it gets filtered, and then it gets released. It eventually makes its way out of the kidney um, and into the other parts of the body. In the meantime, that waste that got filtered out goes all along these little curly cues in this nephron so it gets fine-tuned just perfectly till the concentration of urine is just where your body needs it to be. And so um, if we kind of divide this into sections here, the, the upper half of a nephron is situated in the cortex and the lower half of a nephron is situated in the medulla. So the nephron actually spans both portions of um, of the kidney. Now I want to kind of zoom in on one last thing and that's how these nephrons um, are so intricately related or intertwined with all this network of blood vessels. So let me show you a little bit different picture for that. And here it is. So this is the nephron and it's surrounded by something called paratubular capillaries. Peri means just around. And so you can see there are capillaries all around and intertwined with the nephron. And 
basically this nephron filters the blood and then the waste kind of goes through all these loop de loos and it's here where um, say the magic happens. Um, if we accidentally filtered out too much water, some of it can go back into the blood because those capillaries are right there. Or maybe um, we need to put back some sodium ions so they can go back into the blood. Or, you know, some, there's just a lot of give and take. So the nephron works really closely with these paratubular capillaries to make sure that by the time urine gets all the way to this thing called the collecting duct, that everything is perfect. That the urine is the perfect concentration it needs to be of water and of dissolved substances. Now exactly what happens at each one of these junctions, at the glomerulus, the tubules, the loops of Henle, etc., We'll get into a little bit more detail on the next video. But for now, I wanted to give you a, an overview of the excretory system and how that kidney right there helps maintain a lot of the different homeostatic processes in your body. And I hope that that was helpful.